Greetings, fellow action figure connoisseurs, and welcome to another episode of Digital Caveman Presents Masters of the Universe Tuesday. I, as always, am your host, the Digital Caveman, and today I will be presenting you with the Mega Constructs Masters of the Universe, She-Ra vs. Hordak and Monstroid. Thank you for watching this video or any of my other videos that you may have run across, which I hope is all of them. Only support from viewers like you make this programming possible. Each view does count, and I do appreciate each and every single view that I receive. Thank you, thank you, and thank you so very much for supporting the channel through viewing. Comment below, like, share, subscribe if you'd like to see more reviews, or just to help the channel out further, or both, that's even better. And don't forget to ding that bell so that in the future you will be notified as my new content becomes available. And with all that said, let's get into it. First up, as we normally do here on Digital Caveman Presents, let's take a look at the packaging, and hopefully it'll be a quick look. Mega Construct Master of the Universe, there's the three included figures. On the front, what appears to be a digital render, perhaps, Mega Constructs, Master of the Universe, 8 and up, 306 piece count, a barcode, She-Ra versus Hordak and Monstroid, small print, fine print, legalese print, some symbols, some other stuff, another barcode, some kind of printed on number there, some other numbers, and numbers. On this side, Mega Constructs Master of the Universe, Shira vs. Hordak, and there it is in a bunch of other languages I don't speak. There's another render, uh, Mega Constructs Master of the Universe, render of Shira, and then there's the same picture from the other side, and arrow showing this is how you open the box. And on the back, Mega Constructs Master of the Universe, he spins, and there's a digital render again. Uh, more to collect Land Shark, which we already covered. Go back and watch the review. It's pretty cool. Battle Cat, I don't plan on getting that one. Build and share. Mattel, made by Mattel. Empowering the next generation through play and stuff. Megaconstructs.com, recycled. That does it for a look at the packaging. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside the package. And I already popped the tape, so I cheated a little bit. So you lift these tabs up and it pulls this out of this slot. Uh, you know how to open a damn box. And let's see, we have numbered bags, number one. Bag of number two. Bag number three. Bag number four. And the instruction sheet. Yay, instructions. So there we go. That covers the packaging and what was inside. Now let's take a look at the completed model and accessories. And let's start off with, I guess, the main accessory, which is the instruction manual. It tells you how to put the thing together and they're nicely illustrated and pretty easy to follow for the most part. Um, still not quite up to LEGO standards, in my opinion. Of course, your mileage may vary on that. And if it does, that's okay. Uh, the other accessory, and I'm going to call this an accessory, is uh, the Mega Constructs version of a Brick Buster. So, I think it's cool and it's compact more compact than the uh, Lego one and works just as well and now let's take a look at the figures and we'll start with the Prince Adam and I'm sure there's a mini comic somewhere or maybe these uh, some artwork or something somewhere that uh, you know goes with this uh, particular version of Adam So, and I'm only going to go over one figure's articulation. Oh, his hair wants to go off. And uh, since we've basically seen this male body tons and tons of times, uh, I won't do that one. And then here we have Hordak. Oh, and I forgot to say, Adam comes with his uh, sword of power, or power sword, and a shield. And there I go bumping the camera again. 
And here's Hordak. This is the first time he's been in the pack. And I would say he looks pretty good. Definitely very Hordak y. And because of the inclusion of the crossbow, I'm going to say this is supposed to be more toy. Well, because of the colors of it, too, I suppose. Uh, more like the toy, the original toy, than his uh, animated appearances. And then we come to She-Ra, who I'm also going to say this one is more representative of her original toy rather than um, the cartoon appearances because of the, you know, the gold sword. And even though the original toy's sword did not look like this, uh, it was, you know, it was all gold. So... There's that. And this is the figure. We'll go over her articulation. And, uh, you know, I mean, the sword is a nice looking... It has three paint apps on it, it looks like. A gold, then... I'm not sure what color this is. Maybe a bronze-ish. I don't know. And then, uh, the jewel. And, uh, this she looks pretty good. I mean, she's got nice paint apps. Throughout. The one thing I will say, the eyes look kind of funky. I don't know if you can tell that one eye, this eye over here, on this side, let's see. That. So this eye over here, you know, it looks like it was misprinted and it looks like a snake's eye to me, or maybe a cat eye. But other than that, I mean, nice uh, nice paint apps on the rest of the figure. Not a whole bunch of slop. Um, let's take a look at her articulation. She can't really look up because of her hair. She can look down that far, and of course, when it's out like that, ah! she can do the full exercise, but you kind of have to work around the hair. At the shoulder, she can reach up that high. It does have a 360 degree rotation. It does have a hinge and swivel at the elbow and it bends about 90 degrees and then it does swivel a full 360 and then the wrist spins 360 degrees. At the waist, let's see what she's got. She is put together properly, and she will actually do 360 degrees at the waist. But that's because she doesn't have the standard Masters of the Universe belt, either. So, and then... For the legs, she'll do that much of the splits. She can kick forward like a showgirl. And back that far, the cape kind of gets in the way. At the knee, not quite a 90 degree bend. And then of course nothing at the ankles. Now let's take a look at Monstroid. And you know, I think this is a decent build for, you know, it, it really reminds me of that old uh, original Mat Motu Monstroid, you know, the rounded bottom, uh, the spinning action, which we'll get to in a minute. Now, this one, however, you know, he on each of his legs, you know, they'll go up that far and down that far and, you know, forward and back pretty well. Nothing at this knee joint, but he does have some ankles tilt and forward and backwards. So that's pretty cool. Another thing which is a throwback to the original toy is uh, the original toy was a wind up to make the, the top spin. You would wind it up on the crank and this is supposed to represent that. And then this is the piece that actually makes him spin and he will spin either way and spins pretty freely. Uh, as far as arm articulation, you know, goes down this far, up this far, 
it can spin all the way around, forward, back, and then, although you have to be careful opening and closing, you can open and close the claw so he can actually hold a figure and spin around. Now the one thing that he doesn't really do is while he's spinning, I mean the old one used to, you know, his legs would be up and he would rock while he was spinning. This one, he doesn't really do that. Even, let's put a figure in his claw, he really doesn't do that. Or at least when I was looking at him earlier, he wouldn't do it. So, well, I guess he kind of, sort of does it. But, personally, I prefer him to actually be standing on his feet. Which at one time he was doing. So you get him standing up on his feet. And his belly is not actually touching the ground and so there's that so I, I think this is a pretty decent approximation of that originals action feature and you know I mean this is a bit uh, you know it, it does literally stick out but, you know, I like it. And it's, uh, like I said, it's a good uh, building block approximation of that original toy. And they even went that extra step to include his action feature from the original toy. And I, I appreciate that. I think that's pretty cool. Even though Monstroid was not one of my favorite uh, Masters of the Universe toys, I actually thought he was kind of lame back in the day, and I guess when you look at it, it is, you know, you stick a figure in his claws that didn't even have this much articulation, they were just plastic claws that you just jammed a leg or arm or whatever into, and then wind him up and turn him on and let him spin around, and you know, but for a kid back in the 80s, that was, you know, it was an action feature. <laughs> That's uh, that's the kind of stuff we got back then. Well, that does it for a look at the figures and or the completed model and the figures and accessories. It's time for my favorite part of a review: the comparisons. And let's start things off with the land shark. And I really, there's not another critter big enough to really compare with Monstroid. So I decided just to use the Land Shark just as a scale comparison. And I think it scales up pretty well. And then this is how they size up with He Man, Battle Armor He Man, and Battle Cat. Battle Armor Skeletor and Panthor. And this is how He-Man and Adam compare up. He-Man doesn't want to stand up right now. front. Here's how Hordak and Skeletor compare up. And Skeletor was just standing up. Now he doesn't want to. Move them out of the way. And here's how She-Ra and Tila compare up. 
And that, my friends, does it for the comparisons. For final thoughts on the Mega Constructs Masters of the Universe, She-Ra versus Hordak and Monstroid building set. I guess I should add on there. Uh, I, you know, this, I, I like this set. It's a really good set. I was hesitant to get it at first and ended up just getting it because, you know, I have almost all the other Mega Block sets minus Castle Grayskull and I don't have a lot of the carded figures, so there's that. But, you know, this was uh, the first issue of Hordak and She-Ra. So, you know, I thought it was worth a pickup, and I was right. It, it, it is. Um, if you like He-Man, you like Mega Bloks, you like Lego, you like putting stuff together, then this is a good set for you, especially if you have, you know, a bit of nostalgia for Monstroid. Um, again, you know, I, I like the that they uh, included that that old action feature of spinning around. Uh, you know, the, the, to me, that's the uh, Mega Box team going the extra mile to uh, to get these things right. And I guess I'm just rambling on here. Uh, I, I like it; it's a good set, in my opinion. Uh, and again, if you like Mega Blocks or you like Lego, you like putting stuff together and you want that combined with Masters of the Universe, hey, this is a good set. Well, that does it for the review. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. Only support from viewers like you make this programming possible. Each view does count. And I do appreciate each and every single view that I receive. Thank you, thank you, and thank you so very much for supporting this channel through viewing. Comment below, like, share, subscribe if you'd like to see more reviews. Or help the channel out further, or both. That's cool too. Don't forget to ding that bell so that in the future you will be notified as my new content becomes available. That's a wrap, folks. I'll see you next time.